made of Hollywood. The action drama The Killer, starring Natalie Emanuel and Omar C, is made in Hollywood. I just trusted John and his vision and what he wanted, and it gave me a lot of confidence to just kind of step into it. Made in Hollywood. Also on today's show, Elliot Page explores how to live the most authentic life possible in the emotional drama Close to You. Certainly things are personal in terms of themes, the desire to feel seen, and that, th those, those kinds of things are um, different moments in this film that I think so many queer and trans people will, will relate to. Plus, Heather Graham stars in the horror western Place of Bones. Director Eli Roth brings the best-selling video game franchise Borderlands to the big screen. And we also sit down with the voice cast of the animated series Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This week on Made in Hollywood. Hollywood. Now available on your home screen. A mysterious assassin and a savvy police investigator find themselves aligned against a criminal conspiracy as Natalie Emanuel and Omar C star in The Killer. Some of the boys think you are a legend. What did they say? They say you were the queen of the dead. Why did you save the girl? Easy question, not so easy answer. When you have a remake of something that's so iconic as the killer, to have it be remade or reimagined, if you will, with the man himself. Just being in John Who movie was something like amazing, but being in the killer, the movie, the killer, a classic that I used to watch as a teenager so many times. It was like beyond the dream. There's something that you cannot, you dare to imagine. I just trusted John and his vision and what he wanted, and it gave me a lot of confidence to just kind of step into it. Contract was clear. She should be dead. You just betrayed the most dangerous man in Paris. I know, free soul. Take care of the witness. She's somebody who is faced with a situation and her, her sort of code and how, how she has a re really clear code of conduct. And so she will do the best thing to get the job done. And it becomes very, very clear that Say is someone who she can collaborate with because he gets it. It's that light recognizes light. If you want to live, come with me. She is like supposed to be the enemy, but he, he like you said, like recognizes like, like that because she's he recognized something that same code and the same sense of fairness and justice. So you're a good cop then. Very. And you are an assassin. Are you trying to do something good for a change? Yes, it's like doing a dance, not just within the choreography, but with the camera itself and the way that John shoots it. It's almost like you're waltzing with the camera at times and it's very can be very specific and, and technical. Each move was like a line, like it's a response to something with our character. It was the first time for me to, to approach um, a choreo and a fight scenes like that. So it was very interesting for me. It, it changed my way to see all those action moves, you know? There's also space for sort of some spontaneity and, and playfulness as well. I feel like the process of learning the choreography was, was so fulfilling and so wonderful and the stunt team just really poured into me. I honestly just felt like just really proud of it and very proud of the things that I achieved and it would just never have happened without that huge team of people. I'm not the one out of bullets. Returning home for his father's birthday, Elliot Page confronts unresolved wounds and unexpected connections in the emotional drama Close to You. I'm going home for my dad's birthday. Oh my hey. gosh! <laughs> I haven't gone back in close to four years. Oh, Bold. That's a bold move. Is it? The inspiration, I think, came from really our conversation that we had, the, the first conversation we had, just about life, about things we like, films we like. We got on, we connected. It felt like we could 
make something together. And that's what was my first exciting feeling. I know I'm just nothing but a disappointment to them. You sort of took off, you've been gone? You can come to Dad and I for, you know, anything if you need it. I'm, I'm really okay. In so many ways I am for the first time. Certainly things are personal in terms of themes, the desire to feel seen and that, th those, those kinds of things are um, different moments in this film that I think so many queer and trans people will, will relate to, of course. So of course, in many ways I feel connected to, to the character, but uh, it's, 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 quite, it's quite different. I just still think of you as my little girl. In the script, the scenes are um, very descriptive of what one hopes would be in the scene. You know, it, it sort of makes sense for the actors to have that map, if you like. In some ways, you know, I quite like to, to write the scene so that you could, you, could, you could imagine the dialogue yourself if you read it. You're so sad. And the last thing a parent wants is for the kid to be sad. I've done improv in theatre and really always enjoyed it. So I did have a bit of experience, but nothing to this level. I would say it's an actor's dream, really, to get to dive into the material and into the space and into the character so deeply and with so much freedom. The most I can think I probably improvised was when I was on Trailer Park Boys at 14. You know, when Hillary says it's an actor's dream, it's true. It's like, you, we really disappeared in these spaces and got to re live in it. We just would go deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, really amazing experience. I'm so proud of you, my brave boy, living who you really are. All these years. By the time we get into the scenes, there's freedom to kind of really feel it uh, uh, for the actors. And I think that's the big difference. They know who they are and they know what they're doing and where they're going and all that stuff, but they don't know the absolute detail of where that scene, what it what it will eventually uh, be. Uh, and I find that exciting. After all these years. That kid was in so much pain before. Coming up, Heather Graham stars in the horror western place of Bones and the wild world of Borderlands is brought to the big screen by director Eli Roth. To find out where to watch any movie, check out moviephone.com. Find it, watch it. It's got aspects of being a thriller, it's got aspects of being horror, and then I feel like there's a lot of humor in it, which I was surprised last night at the screening. A lot of people were laughing. Made in Hollywood. Made in Hollywood. Now on digital. A mother and daughter must fight for their survival after their remote ranch becomes the battleground over a stolen fortune as Heather Graham stars in Place of Bones. There's a man in the house. There's money involved. And you know what that means. People will be looking for him. People with greed and avarice in their black hearts. You found me the bastard. When I read the script, I thought it was really surprising. I didn't know where it was going. And we had a screening last night, and actually a few of my friends were, said, I really had no idea where this movie was going. Like, I had no idea what was going to happen. And I just think it was a, a great character. A, as an actress, you want to find a juicy role. And it was fun to play this tough, badass woman who's super smart and, uh, you know, get a, to shoot bad guys with a gun. I call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so I shall be saved from my enemies. I think my character's had a hard life, so I basically um, have decided I'm gonna keep my daughter safe. I'm gonna keep her away from the rest of society because I don't want anything to happen to her that happened to me. This fierce independence, I, I love that about my character. Help! What have you done? Dear Lord, please forgive me. The whole story for me is about how much I love my daughter and wanna protect her and, and help her to have a better life than, than I had. You're telling me you're living all the way out here without even a horse? And I have no intention of ever leaving. The gun shooting is fun. Um, I had to like do a stunt where like I'm shooting at this guy and then I fall over and they had a stunt woman there for me but I ended up doing it myself and then everybody clapped and the stunt people were like, great. And so I felt like I got cred. That was cool. <laughs> These are hard men. 
they will kill us dead in the dirt. He's so nice. He's super cute. Um, him and his wife, they're, they eat really healthy. He was telling me about all this, showing me this food that he cooks that looks amazing. He's kind of the opposite of this character, but in the movie, he's kind of terrifying and horrible. You take this guy who's so movie star handsome and just you kind of want to like him because he's just so handsome, but then he's so horrible, you know, in this movie and his character is so horrible. And we better kill them first. Why don't I start by prying out one of them pretty front teeth? It's got aspects of being a thriller. It's got aspects of being horror. And then I feel like there's a lot of humor in it, which I was surprised last night at the screening. A lot of people were laughing in a lot of places. So it's kind of disturbing, but also it makes you laugh. It's not so much horror that you just like, you know, you can't sleep at night because of your nightmares. <laughs> Here's what's hot on screen. Based on one of the best-selling video game franchises of all time, the fate of the universe lies in the hands of a ragtag group of misfits in Borderlands from director Eli Roth. Would you look at that? A ladder! Unfortunately, my design doesn't facilitate this type of... Well, destiny awaits. Well, the story, you know, that was uh, producer Ari Arad and Randy Pitchford spent a long time with different writers trying different permutations until they settled on this story. One of the things we talked about was like, how do we change stuff and adapt it from a video game to a movie? There are certain things that you obviously want to be faithful to, like the costumes, the design, the guns, the tech. There are certain things that are beloved in the game and we could fill the movie with Easter eggs. And the game is an 18 rated game. It's a very, very violent game. But to render the universe at this scale, the studio wants to make a PG-13 movie. And I wanted to make something for the, you know, the nine-year-old boy in me. Legend has it that there's this massive treasure hidden in some secret vault. And if you go hunting for it, you'd better take any help you can get. I'm terrible at games, so I had to have Christy Pitchford take me through the game, co-playing with her. But I love it. I love the sense of humor. I love the creatures. I love the sense of insanity. I love the world. I love in this kind of the detritus of the world. They're trying to make something beautiful out of it and the trashed planet. Um, and it made me think of Fifth Element and what I saw in that movie. That was the idea of, of like rendering something that didn't look like any other movie you had seen before. Because it's on the weirdest, most dangerous dumpster fire of a world in the universe. God, I hate this planet. Kate was the first one I called. I said, you know, I'm making this insane kind of spaghetti western space opera fun sci-fi video game adaptation and I need someone to be a total badass. And she's like, I'm in. Let's do it. So, you know, Kate learned to twirl guns. She wanted to shoot. She wanted to do her own stunts. We put her in harness and ratcheted her. There's sequence where she's jumping in these trucks. They were 100 feet in the air on wires and harnesses. And once you have Kate, you know, she's actor bait. Everybody wants to act with Kate. So I called Jack right away. So you're, she's going to be a pissed off bounty hunter, and you're the annoying robot. And he, he's a big Borderlands player. So he knew Claptrap. He was all in. And then Jamie Lee said she wanted to play Tannis, which I just, she was my first choice. And she said, yes, she wanted to, she's like, you had me at Cape Blanchard. There's only one of you in the world and you're special. Uh-oh. Kill them all. I've noticed if I do too many horror films in a row, I start to get burnout. It's good for me to switch it up and challenge myself creatively and learn new skills. And you learn something every time, every day on set, every shot you're learning something new. So I never want to get tired of doing it. To find out where to watch any movie, check out moviephone.com. Find it, watch it. Up next, we sit down with the cast of the original animated series, Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The series takes place after the events of the film, and we're in new territory, you know? The turtles are out there, we're no longer in the shadows. Now available on your home screen, a team of sewer-dwelling heroes are forced to discover who they really are in the original animated series, Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. All right, boys, let's do this. The series takes place after the events of the film, 
and we're in new territory, you know? The turtles are out there, we're no longer in the shadows, and we gotta see how these people like us and which bad guys are hiding in New York City who we have to take down. You have fallen into my traps, for I am Bishop. Well, like one name? That's kind of sick. I thought it was very interesting to see the way that they split up the characters because usually you see all the turtles together moving as a unit. And the thing that this show does so great is it highlights each turtle specifically. We need a plan! I really like the, the time that I got to spend with my character and just really shape him into what I really wanted Raph to look like, you know? And I feel like the fact that we all got our own episode, like it, it just gave us that opportunity to do that. I've got a lot of anger to work out. When I pulled up to the studio, I was like, where are my boys at? And they were like, well, you're alone on this one. I was like, oh, okay. And then they were like, and you're alone in the show too. I was like, oh, great. I could just exaggerate how I feel. I'm not the IT guy. You do have that vibe. Working on a project like the Turtles for so long and not being able to do it, you know, with, you know, your brothers is just like, it's crazy. Okay, machine. You want to do this? <gasps> We should talk about it before we do, you know? The style of the show, the visual look of the show, like the sketchiness of it, like, you know, if Michelangelo was sitting in the classroom drawing this in like a notebook instead of paying attention, this is kind of what it would look like. We definitely want to highlight the hand-drawn element to it. We are not shying away from some of the imperfection, the sketchier line. All mutants must be destroyed. Did you just say you want to exterminate us? I have to find my brothers. I have to save them. I think we were all just really excited to get back in the studio. I mean, at first, I was a little sad and scared that I wouldn't see these guys again all together. But, you know, just to bring us all back together is so awesome. And I think we were all very excited to hear that news. And I mean, we're even more excited for you guys to see it. What is that thing supposed to be? Yeah. Ah! Someone should go check it out. No. Not it. What? Ah. Oh. The bang, the bang, bang, bang. Hello and welcome to Movie Phone. Movie Phone? It's so exciting. Can I get hired? I want to be Movie Phone guy. Welcome to Movie Phone. If you have any uh, medical issues, just call Movie Phone. Thanks for joining us for Movie Phone Unscripted, where we answer your questions. Who is the most fun person to fake punch? Like, generally in life? You like think, yeah. I would assume in the movies? Movie Phone TV is your ticket to all that's new at the movies. Stay tuned, there's more coming up on Made in Hollywood. Made in Hollywood. Thanks for watching Made in Hollywood, powered by Movie Phone. For more behind the screen content, check out moviephone.com. Thank you.